paint from the top and work my way down um, and try and keep that bead of water going, watercolour going. So same as I would have painted you know, buildings and so on. So we've got that there. And I want to keep it loose. So I shall use the bead and just let that travel down. So the white really is just going to be a very um, light yellow, really, but um, give it a bit of warmth. And so let's do a little bit of red and yellow ochre for his arm there. Again, I shall let that um, paint it wet into wet. So if we get a bit of bleeding or running into other shapes, that's fine. His head's there. We'll do the other one while we're um, painting the other one because I want all of this stuff to, to run into everything else. So maybe I should have perhaps started the one behind, maybe. But uh, so let's just mix up a dark for his helmet. Need to try and make sure I go dark enough. Um, but also, he's got quite a lot of light shining on there. So, the dark really is down the side here. I'll probably resort to a bit of white gouache for the metal on the uh, frame there. So, again, I'm doing this wet into wet. So, this will give me a bit of a shadow on the face. And just some clean water now. I've just washed my brush off, give it a little rinse. And just let that uh, mix on there. And maybe even just suggest where the eyes are going to be wet into wet so it becomes very soft. And that will just uh, keep softening. Got some said the sunlight's coming in this direction so we've got some light on the side here again just gonna let everything hopefully mix together uh, white is tricky because you you know obviously you don't really need to actually paint any of it because the paper is already white so we'll be using the shadows to create the um the effects we're looking for a bit of warmth in there I think possibly in the photo, the sun's coming from the other way, really, but uh, sure we'll get away with it. So, bit of a purpley colour, so opposite to end of the colour wheel to uh, this purple. So the important thing here is not to go dark with the... Um, cricket players because they need to be white but obviously once we put the um, background on this is going to look really bright so it looks fairly dark at the moment to me but um, it will soon lighten so these bits of detail I'll paint wet into wet just suggest those and the shoes again just suggest that don't need a much there one can be a little bit darker. Um, so this is probably dried here now, but so just use thick paint. Let's get a bit of colour in here. So there's the gloves that protect the fingers. Keep it loose. Maybe a little bit of detail in shoe. So opportunity to get a dark in there. Again, don't make it too neat and tidy. The line there, which is quite useful. Another one there in his pocket. And maybe just a, something on his shoe. A bit of that red down here. Love there. Probably just add a little bit of um, shadow colour I mixed in the glove just to uh, soften it all a little bit. Make it less tidy. And 
maybe just something on the back there. Don't have to be exact with it. So straight into the next figure. So I say this will hopefully come to uh, life when the background goes in. So same as we did before. Background there. So just a little bit of clean water. Just to create the light on the top of his helmet. Let's just pop off a little bit of that. So some more of that colour in there. Do his arm over there. A bit of clean water just to create that um illusion of light. Get over his glove. That up. Put a little bit of a dark edge along there. A little bit more three dimensional. So let's just clean that one off. Same as before. So some like yellow ochre in here. Of warmth. And I don't have to follow the reference as it is, that I'm just trying to make it look more interesting than just white um, paper, really. So, try and give that illusion of them being a three-dimensional shape, but also keep it loose, let the paper do the work and mix these uh, shapes together. So this one definitely needs less detail because it's further away and not the main character. And maybe creating a bit of a shadow there, a bit of detail on those. Suggestion of the shoes. Shadow there again, got to be careful not to go too dark. Just lift a bit of paint there, and um, I'll probably come back with a bit of detail on these afterwards. But um, we'll get the background in and then probably have an idea of how much detail is actually needed. So we just need the bit of a shadow there for his gloves. And like on the other player, put in a bit of detail on there, maybe the sponsors or something, so on the uh, shirt. It's a bit of a dark, I'm not sure whether that's still wet, just probably just enough. To go slightly darker with that helmet here. Straps on there. Let's just get rid of some of that. Here, yeah, the viewer use their imagination. So let's go for putting the background in. I shall just dry it with a hair dryer. Slightly bigger mop brush. So the important thing here is to go dark enough straight away that um, if I have to work on the background again, it will just lose that fresh look to it. So lots of paint. So a bit of neutral tint, a bit of ultramarine blue. So nice and dark, but just a touch of yellow. Just to steer it towards yellow, sort of green, green colour. So, have a bit of red there as well. So this is really thick paint, but I uh, just want to make sure I've got enough to go from the top to the bottom, really. So, we'll go with that. So, nicely loaded up brush. So, I'm going to cut around these shapes. And just make sure I've got this bead of water. So 
this is a fairly new brush this is the Isabay brush size four I think it was yeah size four it's got a good point on it because it's it is new and that's useful for doing this sort of stuff and it doesn't matter if I get a bit of a a white edge around it we will need to go to a slightly smaller brush though go around the figures so I'll just keep reloading that I think uh, go to a slightly smaller brush for a moment and maybe just a touch of that uh, cadmium yellow in there So let's start with some green, but uh, still dark in tone because this is uh, further away. And just paint it up into there. And what I will do is perhaps just give it a little spray, just keep it wet. So I've got to try and make the background nice and dark, but not so it looks muddy or, uh, you know spoils the effect so that's the tricky part but if i make the foreground nice and light we should be okay so we'll just let that mix on the paper and be careful i don't uh, let it run down over the figures so mop that up so Start going to go a little bit lighter. So when I started drawing, I drew this shape first, the um, just this sort of square between the two of them, because that kind of these negative shapes will really help to um, figure out the shapes, really. I think it would be a good idea to get it down to the same level. Paint around these uh, wickets. That figure there. Make sure I've got that, uh, that pool of uh, water there. All important. Right. Let's go lighter green. A bit of um, cerulean blue. Just Try and make it a real vivid green like that. So again, just paint it up into there. Bring that down. We've got a, a pond near us, and uh, every year, about this sort of time of year, the frogs start uh, making their. Uh, their noise and I can hear them in the background I don't know whether the microphone's picking it up but uh, they'll be at that doing that now for the next few months but, uh, all part of being out uh, in uh, the countryside so by having that uh, bead of water it's allowing me to bring this down let's go lighter again so uh, I just Paint up into it again, so I just connect it. That's all I'm doing, paint around that ball. I could actually paint over that because the ball's going to be darker, isn't it? And maybe a, a bigger brush. But uh, this, with the um, comes to the point, so that's quite useful to be able to go around these figures. And I suppose you could have done the background first, but um, I'm not sure why I decided to do it this way, but uh, I think uh, it will work, hopefully. So, you've got to be fairly quick to do all this because, you know, you want this nice gradual wash as it comes down the, the page. But, uh, you know, I shall just paint up into the feet, connect up there. And I think the wickets will wait for those to dry. So 
we'll dry that with the hair dryer just to speed things up but um obviously experiment when you're painting to dry it with the hair dryer not to see what different effects you get but uh, as you're waiting so yellow ochre maybe for these wickets but um strong paint so again these don't need to be mega detailed if anything less is more Fine, and maybe just a, a neutral tint just to darken it, just to put a bit of a shadow there. But to be fair, quite often when I'm editing and I see myself do stuff like that, it's, a, it's hardly even noticeable, so it you know, wasn't worth the effort. So let's anchor them to the ground. So we said the sunlight's coming in this way. So let's um, a green shadow. Blue, yellow. So, oh, green. Nice strong shadow going across here. So, so I'll see. Puts them onto the. Uh, the surface and maybe we'll have I'll just guess a shadow for the the ball whether that's going to work or not and a bit of uh, design crimson for the ball so actually it was quite good to leave the white paper because maybe you can leave a little highlight on the uh, top of the ball there Let's try and get it round and not go bigger and bigger. Let's just make it a little bit darker around here, down the bottom. So just use a bit of clean water just to in that. So just take a bit of paint straight from the tube. A bit of that blue, maybe just show them up a little bit of detail. A dark in here, which is quite good because that separates these. And it's kind of looking now for just a few bits of detail we can add just to. Uh, this looks a little bit soft at the moment, so we can perhaps firm up his strap there, which he's not got done up, or decon a bit better. Darker with that. And detail there but you've got to be careful not to start putting too much detail on because you'll just lose that sort of loose effect so just a touch of red the sponsor across there Get on this add there I think I'll probably leave it at that. That um, uh, maybe just a bit of white gouache for the uh, the guard on his helmet there. But, um, so I suppose you could mask it off, but um, works just as well. Rather than having solid lines, let's just break them up slightly. Same for him, but maybe just slightly less. Let's take the take off. So you can go quite um, dark with the background and um, end up with, you know, very light as well. But, you know, it's got a nice gradual wash, which gives it that illusion of um, depth, I think. 